What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gregel's TV Daily Rewind. It's where we go back and we can give you all of your tech news stories from the past seven days in one single video. I'm recording with this. The Surface Duo 2, that's the camera I'm using currently on here, and this is probably the last time I use it. Uh, to be honest with you, as I'm going to send it back to Microsoft, I might do a video on that whole process. But ultimately, crazy news. Uh, the future of the Galaxy Z Fold series. I'm not talking about the Z Fold 4, but it could be. But basically, the craziest new technologies come out for the Z Fold line are really exciting. We get a first look at those, and we get information on the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the Z Fold 3, and so much more. Enjoy this week, and we'll see you in the next one. First story is about the cameras for the Galaxy S22 Ultra and what you should expect, because they seem like they have changed ever so slightly. So this is a tweet from Ice Universe who's saying that the S22 Ultra camera setup previously we were thinking was 108, 12, 12, and 12 megapixels, but the correct one is 108 megapixels, 10, 10, and 12 megapixels on there. We're gonna get 108 megapixel improved version of the HM3 main M1 lens on there with a 1.33 inch 0.8 aperture on there and the other cameras will be a 12 megapixel sony another 10 megapixel sony and another 10 megapixel sony so they should theoretically be slightly different than the cameras that we got with the s21 ultra due to the fact that they're using different cameras or at least slightly different cameras on there so all good signs to hopefully something new and extravagant in terms of photo taking with the galaxy s22 ultra not that the galaxy s21 ultra is a slouch in really any way for taking photos but we again should see improved photos with the new s22 ultra speaking of the cameras with the galaxy s22 phones well when are we going to get a 200 megapixel sensor like we were promised or at least we thought we were promised through rumors the past maybe year or so well it seems like it's going to be a little ways out due to the fact that again another tweet from ice universe saying that the 200 megapixel camera will be adopted by moto motorola then by xiaomi in the second half of next year and then in 2023 by samsung so 2023 if you're a samsung fan for the 200 megapixel camera just to add on to that it's not like we really need a 200 megapixel camera where are you posting this Instagram it's you know there we already know what they do with that they basically downgrade the crap out of those photos the next few stories are really interesting and it's a look into the future of what to expect with Samsung tablets and laptops and Z flip and fold Four as well so let's just dive into all these different tweets from this this is coming from Tron and the neighbor site I'll link it down below like I always do and the first tweet saying new products with new tech in 2022 Model with a sliding display announcement will come in a teaser form discussing prototype reveal around the time of the Z Fold series fourth generation unpacked after considering its development progress. Now this sounds to me like a phone or a tablet with a sliding display. We've seen some renders of possibly what this could look like, but this is very interesting. It doesn't sound like it's probably going to come out in 2022. It just sounds like we're going to see potentially what it will look like. And it sounds like it'll probably end up coming out in 2023. The next one comes about the Z Fold form factor in a laptop and tablet. We've heard about this previously as well. The display portion and keyboard portion of this Z tablet is all in display form, real glass display. Early unpacked may happen around the Z tablet display production timeline. So again, is this going to come out this year, next year? Uh, it sounds a little too futuristic for this to come out in 2022. Will it come out? Possibly. Uh, um, I just won't be surprised if it gets pushed back a little bit, but it is seemingly kind of interesting to have a all glass phone, uh, laptop, tablet type device with, you know, a separate area for videos and watching the screen and then another one with a virtual keyboard on top of some glass so super interesting with that and then we're getting down into some uh, z fold 4 and flip 4 saying that the z fold 4 and flip 4 on, and this is i think an unfortunate thing are not going to be a generation jump almost like think about it like an iphone thing where it was like an s where it had like just a couple of improved features and it sounds like that's what the fold 4 and flip 4 are going to be it's saying that they will uh, be equipped with an improved ultra thin glass with noticeable difference lighter weight and a thinner chassis and then there's to add on to that as well 
completely different thinner hinge and a new form minimum curve radius is less than 1.4 R. The hinge design and manufacturing costs will be lower and production process has been simplified. Pressure when folded has been reduced and achieved ultra low curvature. So it sounds like what we're gonna get with the Z Flip 4 and Fold 4 is really a cheaper price. I think that's gonna be the biggest selling point about this. Don't be surprised if this drops down to 1500 or even 1600 bucks at the low price for the Z Fold 4 and maybe 900 bucks or less for the Z Flip 4. And then to add on to that, thinner, lighter, maybe a little bit more durable, a little bit better feel in your in, in your hand. Uh, maybe when you close it, it'll always feel tight. Um, so there's some things I think, sounding like anyway, that it's gonna have. It just doesn't sound like, you know, if you have this phone, then you're like, oh, should I wait for the Z Fold 4 because it's nine months away? Should I wait because it's gonna be so much better? I, honestly, it doesn't sound like it's gonna be that much better. It sounds like it's only going to be like better design, not so much better features or software or anything like that. Sounds like it's gonna be very tiny steps in the future right now anyway for the Z Fold 4. I was really, really, really hoping for a pro version or a, uh, just a version of that phone that was just like completely, completely specced out with the best of everything top of the line that Samsung offers and it just doesn't seem like we're gonna get that. It seems like we're almost gonna be getting another kind of level, at least specs, Anyway, a level design, and they're going to put more in, more, more money, and 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 in in uh, what would you call it? In you know, just improvements into the design of the device more so than anything. Speaking of the Galaxy Z Fold Three, you can pick one up at Amazon right now for fifteen ninety nine. Really, really good price for this phone. So if you're thinking about getting one of those, pick one up fifteen ninety nine. It's pretty much unbeatable uh, for a fantastic. Phone. Story of the day has to do with a new fast charger that'll be released for the Samsung Galaxy phones, probably around the same time the Galaxy S22 series is released. Why? Because this is a new 45 watt charger and it should be faster than the previous 45 watt charger that launched with the S20 line. Check this out. So this information is coming from Roland Kwan and this is going to be the new 45 watt Samsung USB-C power adapter. Now, the end of that, if you live in America and Canada, looks completely different than what we use. Don't worry about that part. But ultimately, the, the charger itself it's kind of, I guess, is a little bit different than what we've seen in the past with the previous USB-C charger. This is what the new one will look like. Again, if, again, if you're in America, it'll look different at the end there, but everything else will look, look relatively the same. And then they're also coming out with this one, which is their Samsung Power Adapter Trio. And what this is, you get a uh, the plugs uh, from, I believe it's the bottom to the top, are 15 watts, 25 watts, and then 65 watts of charging. So a lot of power in this charger. It's probably gonna be absolutely humongous, but it's gonna be able to charge basically a laptop, if you have a little laptop, um, a phone obviously, other devices, tablets, everything that you'd pretty much want to underneath the sun with this one charger. And these all should launch in February when the Galaxy S22 series and Galaxy Tab S8 launch. Next up is super cool because I love folding phones and this is just adding more to the market potentially. This is coming from Let's Go Digital and they are showing off a OnePlus tri-fold foldable phone with a tablet sized screen. OnePlus patents an advanced tri-fold folding smartphone with a double hinge and a handy slider to lock the folding position. And when we look at the patent pendings that they came up with and the way all the different ways that you can potentially use this tri-folding phone from their OnePlus, um, it's awesome. This is the stuff that's gonna reinvigorate and get people excited about phones again if they become kind of mundane. This is the kind of stuff that we're gonna see in the next year, two, three years. Um, we've already seen Galaxy Fold phones, we've seen folding phones from Huawei and other companies as well, and it's just gonna be more and more companies are gonna get into this. And ultimately, the more we see, the better this stuff is gonna get. The prices will end up getting lower. Uh, the product itself will become more sturdy and interesting. And think about, I mean, I don't know how large this is gonna be. It doesn't, when I'm just browsing the article real quickly, it doesn't show what the, and they probably don't know anyway, but. It looks huge. I mean, it potentially could be huge. And there's so many different form factors. This would go against Samsung's tri-folding phone and whoever else comes up with a tri-folding phone. 
But I love, I really, really love this kind of stuff. This is get what gets me excited. Um, and it's really, the, at the end of the day, what it's not so much that it folds, it's that it unfolds into these humongous displays with you know gaming and multitasking and you know, browsing social media and just seeing su things on such a larger scale. This is the next movement of you know devices for tablets and, and smartphones to breathe new life into those categories. So our first story of the day is about the Xiaomi 12 Ultra. I had some you, some some of you people asked me about you know talking about this phone, so I, I thought I would. So this is a kind of first look at what this phone is going to look like and some of the features that it's going to have. So without further ado, let's jump into this story. So this is coming from Let's Go Digital, and this is what they're thinking that the Xiaomi 12 Ultra with Leica camera will look like. The Xiaomi 12 Ultra will be the new top model, powerful Android 12 smartphone. It will be the first Xiaomi smartphone with a Leica camera and when you look at this phone obviously you can see the triple camera setup as well as the little display on the back there and then you get the obviously 6.8 inch display with a camera at the top on the front of the camera and like a when you think like a like it makes amazing cameras and hopefully they're going to bring that over to xiaomi as well xiaomi usually makes pretty nice cameras especially for their high-end phone so this shouldn't be any different than what we've seen previously with them maybe just obviously with the like a branding on there i do love the little display on the back next to the camera so that you can i guess interact with it notifications see what you're taking a picture of with those back cameras i absolutely love this i believe they did this on last year's model as well and um, you're looking at a phone that should have the newest Snapdragon processor, which was not gonna be called the 898. It sounds like it's gonna be called the Snapdragon 8th Gen 1. Uh, I, I think it's awful naming, but whatever. I guess you'll have 8 Gen 2, 8 Gen 3, but 8 Gen 1 will be their premium processor that they release at the end of this year. And then for most of the phones when they come out next year, and then when can this phone come out? You're probably looking at around March of 2022 with really really fast charging like way faster than anything samsung currently offers and then also 120x zoom and so much more so we'll wait and see as it comes out hopefully they'll send it my way but i don't know you guys are gonna get this phone let me know in the comments down below one plus 10 pro guys you probably want to know what the specs are well these are the preliminary specs of what you should expect with that one plus 10 pro phone when it arrives and it's got some very very nice specs as you would expect from a one plus 10 phone and they are a 6.7 inch QHD plus 120 Hertz refresh rate should be AMOLED as well Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM with 128 or 256 of UFS 3.1 storage IP68 dust and water resistance 4850 and 8 megapixel triple camera setup 5000 milliamps and a 32 megapixel selfie snapper now you know uh, those are great specs. They're not super exciting because that's what most flagship phones have these days. But regardless, if you're a OnePlus fan, you're going to be very happy, hopefully, with this phone when it does come out. Next up, Black Friday, which is huge in America, which is really, if you don't know what about it, what it's all about, basically it's the biggest shopping day of the year here in America. It's the day after Thanksgiving, and it's when all the stores online and offline have these huge sales, and you can get some great deals, and you can end up, it's great for the consumers, and it makes, they call it Black Friday because it means that's when the stores are in the black, meaning that they're no longer in the red, meaning that they're actually making a profit. The profit has turned in, the, all the money they've earned is now turned into a profit at this point of the year so with that said samsung's having theirs right now and there's some great deals going on if you're a samsung fan anything from a galaxy z flip 3 or fold 3 uh, up to 250 dollars off for those phones with free galaxy buds 2 you also have the ability to get an s21 21 plus or 21 ultra for uh, 100 150 or 250 bucks off with a $50 instant credit that you can get, or if you're even thinking about getting a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra phone, 
you can get that and get a free Chromebook 4 plus a $100 discount on that. So it's all kinds of crazy deals. It's linked down below if you wanna take advantage of that. And if you do shop through that link, it does support the, this channel. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna do your shopping, do it now. You're gonna get some amazing deals. A lot of these deals end fairly soon. So just be wary of when you're doing the shopping that you wanna take advantage of these deals. Our first story of the day has to do with a old friend of ours known as the Galaxy Note phone. And we keep hearing and hearing that it's dead, it's dead, it's dead, it's dead. And it'll turn into the Galaxy S22 Ultra because that's gonna have an integrated S Pen. And this just adds on to that because of the fact that this news is coming from ET News over in South Korea. And you can see Galaxy Note has been withdrawn completely. It says new product not released prospect to integrate concept into the Galaxy S Ultra, which has been discontinued from existing models. But ultimately what they're just talking about is that the Galaxy Note phone has been removed completely from the upcoming roadmap of devices that Samsung will be releasing. So it just, again, just, it, not a surprise to you guys, but I kind of wanted to just throw it in there just so you guys, if you even had an inkling of hope, it really doesn't look like it's ever gonna come back, at least for this year again. Next story is all about the Galaxy sliding phone. We kind of talked about this yesterday and potentially might come out this year in 2022, but it sounds more likely that they're just gonna show it off in a teaser of exactly what it's going to look like and it would probably end up coming out in 2023. And it sounds like they're going to give us a little teaser uh, video of it when they announce and release the Galaxy Z Flip and Fold phones because it would kind of be in that same hemisphere of devices. So let's check this out. We've seen this before pretty much. This is coming from the folks over at Let's Go Digital who put out some great content. So I would really really recommend you going over to their site reading the full article but it says the Galaxy Z Fold and Slide smartphone Samsung patents advanced Galaxy Z Fold smartphone that also extends out for an even larger display surface with a Penta camera that's right Penta camera on there so when you look at this these are the uh, designs that they sent over <clears throat> that they should look like and it's just it, uh, this is these devices are just so fun and interesting and there's so many orientations that you can use this in it really begs the question of like man there's <clears throat> the software is going to obviously have to mature with these devices and what about cases and what about overall usage of these devices like how is this going to fit in our life it's going to improve hopefully because again bigger displays it's going to be great for gaming and gaming on the go and productivity work with you know if you want to do spreadsheets and there's so many use cases for this from pleasure to work to gaming to just overall usage throw in an s pen in this and you got a great little you know notebook device or make it you know close it all in and you have a small little phone. So it's like, it's so awesome. It's just like the Z Fold series, um, but maybe even better. It's super interesting and, and I absolutely love it. We have a couple of news stories, a handful of questions. Today's Black Friday here in America. So one of the biggest sale days of the year, we can get some pretty amazing deals. In the comments down below, I'll leave my three favorite deals of what I'm I think people would be interested in potentially like cool stuff. So I'll check, just check those out down below there if you want to take advantage. One that I'm really going to talk about though, real quick, is uh, the case that I use on my Galaxy Z Fold 3, which is this one right here from Spec. It's the Presidio Perfect Clear. It's only $38.97 currently. It's linked down below. It's an amazing case. It's clear. There's no oxidization. I've had it for 90 days. It's not yellowing at all. It's it has a germ killing or germ deferring capabilities built into it, micro microbial, microbial, antimicrobial built into it. It's a really, really nice case. Check it out, guys. I know a lot of you guys that have it really, really love it as well. And it's for a great price right now. With that said, let's jump into the tech news stories. Our first story of the day is all about the name of the next generation Snapdragon potentially 898 because we go to 888 now it's potentially gonna be the 898 well it's this is gonna be the name of it instead of 898 and is a load of tongue in there and it's not a good name it's too much and too confusing but here's what it is going to be based off this tweet from Ishan Agarwal says new processor with the name Snapdragon 8GX Gen 1 spotted by Zach Rasky on Qualcomm staging website. Could this be the final name of the Snapdragon 888 successor, their new flagship chip on or a variant of the Snapdragon Gen 1 meant for products other than 
smartphones. It looks like it's gonna be for the smartphones. Now, if it ends up not being for smartphones and for maybe laptops or something else, I'll let you guys know, but it looks like that's gonna be the new name of their Snapdragon processors for smartphones. It's, I don't like it at all. I, it, it's like, you work for this company and, and they make great products, don't get me wrong, but it's like, who came up with that name? It's pretty awful. It's a bad name. What do you guys think about the name? Let me know in the comments down below if you like that name, 8G, Smart Snapdragon 8GX Gen 1. Let me know. And our last story of the day, this is really cool. Uh, it's coming from Joshua Swingle, who pulled it from Mac Rumors, who pulled it from Ming-Chi Ku. This is Apple's AR headset. This is an, uh, when we talk about this, augmented reality. It's gonna have an M1-like processor inside, secondary low-end chip to do whatever, low, who knows what they're gonna do with it. 4K micro OLED displays in there, it's gonna be amazing. Wi-Fi 6E, which would be the fastest Wi-Fi available. VR experiences, AKA virtual reality experiences. iPhone is not required to run this. And the launch of it is potentially quarter four of 2022. And this, if Apple does this, this is going to, and we already, this device is like this already in the market, don't get me wrong, augmented or virtual reality, there's tons of them out there. But if Apple does it, this is where you're gonna really see a lot of push, a lot of growth in this because so many people love and trust Apple products, especially on a grand mass scale, not just like America, and like it's everywhere. So this is really, really gonna push the envelope. I'm really excited for this. Um, usually when Apple comes out with a first generation product, it's usually missing a bunch of features that people would want and then the second gen comes on like, oh, this is really what I wanted. So I guess we'll have to see if this first gen product Product is missing some things that people will ultimately want, but seeing everything in there is making me pretty excited, like to the point where I'm like, damn, this is gonna be pretty damn cool. Everything from watching movies in a virtual movie theater, uh, running a virtual desk, running uh, video games through these. There's so many things that you can do with this that are gonna potentially hopefully blow people away and it's very, very exciting. So our story of the day has to do with this phone, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold three and flip three and when the real one ui4 software will come out because currently we're in beta we have two betas thus far at least in america three betas if you live elsewhere such as south korea but when are we going to see the final version start to roll out well it's not that long of a wait check this out this is coming from tron and tron is saying that the fold three flip three one ui4 stable build is expected on the first week of december if delayed, it'll be a week later. So you're looking at basically a week or two, kinda, maybe you, if you wanna see two or three weeks, until the One UI 4 software officially comes out for the Z Flip 3 and Z Fold 3. So it's not very long to wait, so you don't have to wait that much longer. So if you've been struggling with the November update that's come out recently, or you're getting come some weirdness, especially on the Z Fold 3, fret not, because the better of these updates is just around the corner. Next up, a little bit of a bad news, especially if you're a Note fan. Lately, we've been talking about the Note being completely D-E-A-D, -E dead. And now, what about the Note 20, Note 20 Ultra? Those phones are still, you can pretty much purchase those anywhere still at this point, but everything has a lifespan. So when is that gonna be dead? When's the death certificate gonna be issued for that phone? Well, it seems like it's extremely close based off of this information. Max Jamber is saying that rumors are suggesting that Samsung will end the production of its Note lineup in December, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, he's right, what are your thoughts on it? Are you pissed, are you happy, are you ready for the next big thing? Because the S22 Ultra is right around the corner as well, you're looking at about two months, that will have S Pen integration, that will have squared off edges. So do we even need the note at that point? It's like, let me know, I mean, it's, it's kind of sad, but we're gonna lead this into something as well. So let's talk about that net being thing, the S22 phone. So this is going to be the glass pieces. And we've seen this before, but I always like looking at this stuff because it's, you know, it's, it's we're so close to it. But you get the S22 Ultra on the left, the S22 Plus in the middle, and the S22 on the right. Now you can see the camera punch outs with the S22 Plus and the S22. S22 Ultra, you, I don't see it really, at least from here. Doesn't mean it doesn't have it. It probably, this glass case just probably doesn't have an exact cutout for it. Um, so don't think it has an under display camera because it doesn't. Also, you do see the squared edges on here, which are very reminiscent to the phone we just spoke about a second ago, the Note 
uh, 20 and 20 Ultra. So you're still gonna get that squared off edge. You're gonna get an S Pen integration. And you can see the size differences also between the 22 Ultra, 22 Plus, and regular 22. And it's quite sizable between the, the 22 Ultra and the 22. And then obviously that 22 Plus kind of sits in the middle of everything. Uh, between that. But the story about the day is about the Pixel 6a. We've seen the Pixel 6a, which looks like a carbon copy of the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. But what about the processor that's going to be inside the Pixel 6a? Is it going to use a Snapdragon? Is it going to use something else? Well, at least from the early indications, it looks like the Google Pixel 6a will run a Tensor chip on the Tensor chip, but a lesser camera than the Pixel six so you're gonna get the same processor they get in the six and the six pro so you usually get that really really good performance but again with some lesser cameras on there which at the end of the day most people might be completely fine with that especially if this price tag is amazing it's kind of weird though at the same time even though this phone probably won't come out for months from now it's still gonna have a processor like top end but have a really inexpensive price tag so i don't know kind of interesting where they're going with that and i'm looking forward to it i gotta say next up is a couple of deals this first one is for the z flip three this is probably the lowest price or one of the lowest prices i've seen 7.99 for the z flip three now both of these deals are with a third party seller on the walmart website just be uh forewarned or just know about that and they offer if the other thing is um uh you know the prices are low <laughs> that's the other thing to know and then the other thing is the z fold three this is i believe the lowest price i've personally seen uh 14.49 now i'm not talking about with trade-ins and stuff this is just the price you will pay and they're in new condition as well 1449 freaking amazing prices right there for both of those phones that was your news guys but your question of the day is what phone are you buying next let me know in the comments down below for me if i had to guess it would probably be the s22 ultra probably be the next phone that i buy out of pocket uh, but let me know what you're gonna buy next in the comments down below with that said let's jump into the q a portion of the video and drop that beat First question comes from Dave. When do you think the new Razer will come out? And do you think it will be better than the Z Flip? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. The Motorola phones don't get me that excited. And uh, when I saw the Razer, the Flip Razer for the, you know, when I started at CES, I was not blown away. So I don't have high hopes for that either. Uh, the newer Razer. So I'd still say get the Z Flip. Quatrogan for all our son. Probably butchered that. Sorry. What case? Complete case for the whole phone for the Z Fold. Three makes phone stop wobbling when you are using the phone on a table with the uh, small screen on the front. I don't know every single case, but let me just throw mine on here just to see if it wobbles on the front there. Mine doesn't wobble. If you're talking about just putting this thing face down when it's closed up, mine doesn't wobble. So um, I'll put a link to the case that I use here. If you're talking about it with it opened, let me just lay it down like that doesn't wobble either and I think that's what you're asking so this is a great case from spec I'll link it in the description down below New York's finest will the Z Fold blast break from the constant closing all the time remember when you dropped your other phone hopefully this one holds up no it shouldn't just break by you opening closing the phone no that shouldn't happen now if you just drop it without a case or it, with a case that's not very protective yeah it might break but uh, I'm like I said I've dropped this a, a bunch of times I did a video today and I've I've dropped this phone a bunch of times with the case on and not a scratch no breaks nothing Frank Frenette says that the crease look is bad in real life on the full three as it does on the YouTube videos. Man, it's just like I've said this a bunch of times. When you take a phone, I don't even, I, when I, I can see it right now when I look at it, but you don't even notice it. Like, don't worry about the crease. Seriously. It's like, do you notice the, the camera there? When sometimes do you notice when it was there? Do you notice the notch on the iPhone? You did, it's stuff you get used to and it does not bother you. It won't, don't even worry about it. But can I notice it and do I see it? Yeah, I notice it sometimes, but does it bother me? Not in the slightest. Timothy Hammock says, if I use a lot of sports apps like uh, Facebook and Messenger and other apps, which device would best for battery life, Google Pixel Pro or the Z Fold 3? Or which device would be better with battery life? Because I run a lot of apps Or how, by the way, I'm coming from the LG Wing 5G. Completely different phones. I don't think the battery life is good on the Z Fold 3. You'll hear different differently from other people, but the people I've spoken to, like I should say that are my, like usually my friends, don't get that good a battery life. 
Every case is different though, um, but I would I would expect you're gonna get better better battery life on the Pixel 6 Pro. The Duke's a silly question I'm aware of, but if I were allowed someone to use an app on my phone, how could I block my phone preventing them from just snooping around? Um, I mean, it depends what apps you're trying to, to block up. Um, uh, you could do the, uh, what is that, that private file thing? I never use it. Uh, man, what is it called? Let me just search for it in the settings. Private something. What is that thing? Are you guys, you can, you guys can tell me. Not privacy. Secure, secure. That's what it's called. Like secure, secure folder. That's what it's called. Look up secure folder in your settings. Do a search for that, and you can set up that and keep your. It says keep your personal files and apps safe and secure. So you could create. Uh, you could do that and just allow certain apps or files for people to use, and then the rest within the secure folder, and that would allow you to kind of keep things safe. Hey, wow. Oi no lol, I'm sorry about that. Uh, does the Android 12 better update affect the Z Fold 3 mobile network? I'm having an issue with my mobile network Sprint T-Mobile. Um, well, I, I can't say yes or no because I haven't had issues before this update or during the update. So I couldn't say yes, it fixes your your your, your updates, I mean your, your network connectivity with it. Um, I don't know, again, because I haven't heard anybody have that issue really, and I don't have that issue. One whole choice is I currently own the Note 20 Ultra 5G. The Note line is going to end, so I wonder what will happen for the software for the Note 20 series. This is still going on because the Note 20 software series is still ported until 2027, and I heard recently that the Note 20 series is getting software until 2028. So like in the year 2024, the Note 20 series gets OS updates and starting from 2025, Note is going to get security patches and this goes until 2028. Do you think this is going to be true? It's usually um, three years of OS updates and then five years of security updates. So I don't think you're gonna get them until 2028. I would guess it's probably gonna be something more of the lines because the Note 20 came out in obviously 2020. So I would guess that all updates would probably stop for that phone by 2025. I do not think you're gonna get updates till 2028. That doesn't sound right. Uh, you might, but I highly doubt it. New York's finest said, should I purchase the Hisense 75 inch TV or the TCL 75 inch TV? I'm going to try to find a great deal, but make a smart choice. Now, it depends what series you're getting of both of these. Um, if you're getting like, I, I, usually I will say this, usually Hisense makes a better screen, but their reliability is not that great. So if you're gonna get a Hisense, I would say, no matter what version of the Hisense you get, I'd probably, and I don't like saying this, I'd probably tell you to get an extended warranty. TCL, I've had, uh, I have two, two or three, I can't remember now, at least two TCL TVs, I wanna say three, um, that I've had. And I've had one an issue with one and it got fixed really, really quick within the one year warranty. But the other one's completely fine and running really, really well. So it depends which one you get. Um, yeah, it's tough to tell, especially when you're not being specific of which series you're getting. Otherwise, it's kind of tough for me to tell you, sorry. And our last question comes from Darren Hill, I have an iPhone 13. I'm thinking about switching to the S21 Ultra. I just wanted to know what is your thoughts on that? It goes back to, what is important to you? If it's important for you to have iMessage and FaceTime, then you should not leave Apple. But if you can get it out of that and you're not totally locked into the Apple ecosystem, yeah, take the jump to the S21 Ultra uh, or wait a couple of months and get the S22 Ultra, especially depending upon which phone you have, uh, you might still get a great trade-in deal if you switch over to the S22 Ultra as well. And the S22 Ultra marginally should be a better phone overall. Um, so I'd probably tell you to wait, especially since you don't already have the S21 Ultra. Unless you can get a crazy deal on the S21 Ultra, then jump at it. Um, and then beyond that, I, it does not, I mean, both phones are gonna be great for you, the iPhone 13 uh, or the S21 Ultra. S21 Ultra, is, I feel like, has a better screen, a faster refresh, right? I mean, it feels faster anyways with, with stuff uh, running the phone, but I don't know, it, it really depends with what's important to you, but hopefully what I laid out kind of got you situated with that. Thanks for your question, guys. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below with the word question. I'll answer it tomorrow, and we'll see you down the road.